Hello and welcome to The Real Supply. This is Virgil. Today I want to talk with you guys about returns and how you can actually process returns much smarter. So, majority of the companies are actually losing a lot of money and they have a really uh, hard time processing returns, <clears throat> mostly because all the returns are going back to one um, centralized location. So let me just give you this example. Let's say you're, uh, you have a web store and you're selling, you know, in US um, and you have multiple warehouses, one on the East Coast, one on the West Coast. Um, and let's say your customer is on the East Coast in New York City and they are trying to return a product. Now, where do you return that product? On the East Coast warehouse or on the West Coast warehouse? Well, most of the retailers are going to have one centralized location to return all products. And this is mostly happening because they do not have a system in place to actually route each product to the right location. So if you think about it, we have a lot of challenges these days. Actually, um, so as I said, you know, if you have <clears throat> multiple warehouses, uh, for returns, it takes a lot of time and money to process these returns. Um, and if you work with dropshippers or different vendors, so for example, let's say you're selling lifetime lifestyle uh, products from clothing all the way to furniture. The clothing might come from one company, right? Uh, from one vendor, from Nike or whoever it might be, you know, and whoever it's going to ship that product for you um, as a dropshipper. But the furniture might come from a completely different pro uh, company. So if the customer purchases both products, where do you actually return those? Are you going to return them to one location, another? Um, what, what are you going to do? And the same thing can happen if um, your company's return locations are not equipped to process these products. So for example, um, you can, maybe a customer is, you're selling uh, bathtubs, right? And you have a big bathtub, hundreds of pounds, very heavy product. Um, but you're also selling accessories like the faucet, you know, or different fittings, whatever it might be. Um, if you return that entire bathtub to the warehouse that is not equipped to receive that heavy product, that is not equipped to leave that heavy product, how are they even going to process that return? It's very, very challenging. And many, many retailers are actually facing this problem every day. Um, as I said, you know, one of the biggest challenges, you know, like in efficiencies, you know, like you have multiple warehouses throughout the country, but you're always sending back all the products to the main location. It can be a nightmare, honestly, it can be a nightmare. Um, and the customers these days are demanding transparency. So a few weeks ago, I watched, uh, there was like this 16 minute like video on YouTube in which <clears throat> a company actually researched how is Amazon, you know, handling returns, you know, where they are sending back each product and if they are disposing those products or repairing those products to make sure that, you know, they are saving, you know, like, um, you know, carbon footprint, you know, like they, they have a very reduced carbon footprint, um, you know, they um, process returns in a sustainable fashion, uh, products that can be recycled are actually recycled and not uh, dumped into the landfill. And for example, if you're <laughs> sending specific products such as like, um, like, um, like a mattress, for example, Nobody's going to sleep in your return mattress, right? Usually those products are sent, you know, to donation centers where they are cleaned, you know, and basically donated to a person in need. So if you think about this entire situation, returns are not just challenging processing them, but the entire logistics behind. And if you have, you know, highly discounted products, final sale, you know, kind of things, you know, you want to return those products, you know, to uh, maybe an outlet or like a liquidation store, right? Instead of back to your warehouse and from that warehouse to, um, you know, one of your locations. So a lot of challenges, but in the same time, you have um, a lot of opportunities. And when we look at opportunities, um, 
we can optimize you know the logistics in returning a product but what we need is a solution that can actually calculate where each product should be returned so <clears throat> as we discussed you know heavy products bulky products to the right warehouse that can actually process that you know like um, regular clothing for example return to the closest warehouse you know so you're actually saving some money there as well or um, you know if the product is needs to be recycled directly to a recycling facility or donation center so customers are following this and the faster you can get back the product you know the faster you can put it back on your shelf like actually faster you can return that product you know the faster the customer is going to get the refund and it will ultimately result in happier customers so <clears throat> if you have the right system in place you actually have the opportunity to create a win-win situation faster for the customer but faster for yourself as well everybody gets their money faster win-win situation right <laughs> so what we're talking about is here, uh, it's actually what we call intelligent disposition. And we basically launched this new feature. We're very happy for it. And um, I would like to give you a few examples of how this can be used. <clears throat> so as we said, um, if you are working with various vendors or dropshippers, uh, you already know uh, returns are a nightmare. Um, if you want to return uh, each product to the original warehouse that was sourcing the product, so maybe the furniture, warehouse A, clothing, warehouse B, right? You don't want to meet, mismatch the two warehouses. <clears throat> also, opportunities to uh, return, save money on the labels, right? By returning each product to the closest warehouse, um, or, you know, if the product can be recycled, repaired, to closest recycling repair center. Um, products that can be donated, send them to a donation center and you can actually make um, the customer feel great about you know, uh, their return as well. And <clears throat> if you have a product that you know, it's going to be an outlet or cleaners product, you know, just simply send it directly to your outlet store. There's no need to send it to your warehouse and from there to your outlet. Just get it as soon as possible to your Linux location and get that product back on the shelf. So now let me show you how this actually works. Um, here we have <clears throat> an order with three products, but these products are actually sourced from completely different location, right? So, and as soon as we return these products, uh, we are going to see that if we selected return to vendor, we have a logic in the back end which allows us to uh, you know so our intelligent disposition actually allows us to create logics and rules you know around products and uh, uh, product attributes or uh, various uh, conditions to determine what is going to happen with that product so in this situation we said all the products should go back to um, the original uh, warehouse right first two products were actually purchased from um, warehouse one product number three warehouse number two and now when we are going to process this return what we are expecting is to create two uh, return labels and the two products to be grouped together going back to warehouse one and the third product to warehouse two and we hit continue um, now we can see the instructions. Uh, we are going to uh, receive, you know, a prepaid uh, downloadable return label. So we have the products, we see the cost, the total. And now when we're finalizing the return, what we're actually doing now, we're actually calculating all the logics that you set up. Um, and we are generating return labels based on the logics. So we are going to determine which product goes into which warehouse and generate a retail label for each. So if we scroll further down, we can see the first two products are part of the first RMA. And here we have -da! <laughs> the first, uh, the first uh, return label. And if we scroll a little bit further down, we have the second RMA and the return label for this one. 
it's very easy for the customer to see which product goes with which uh, return label and in which box and uh, it's great for you it's great for the customer and as long as we are communicating that with the customer they are going to be more than happy to return to the right location so let's look a little bit further uh, what we talked about so returns can be very complex but it can be solved with a solution that allows you to do intelligent dispositions uh, that is based on um, rules and logics you know and automatically calculated um, you want to send back the product to the right destination and not just to the right destination but to the final destination by doing so you can save a lot of time and a lot of money um, and ultimately you are going to get your products back on the shelf faster the customer is going to receive their refund faster and they're going to be much much happier with your um, services and as we said you know the customers demand transparency um, they want to see what you as a company are uh, is going to do with their products that they just returned um, and I highly recommend actually to watch that short video. I'm going to put this in the comment section um, that actually shows, you know, how this group of people are actually uh, chasing down with trackers, you know, Amazon products to understand how the products are returned. And you're going to see like the uh, reaction when they uh, find out that products that they thought are going to be resold are actually sent to landfill. It's, it's, um, it's insane. Uh, it's insane actually what happens so next um, don't forget this is already live uh, so if you have any questions uh, just reach out to us and we can help you set everything up um, it's very easy one of our customer success manager is going to help you configure everything and get started if you have any questions reach out to us take care bye